Hi, my name is Zhongxu Liu. I'm a psychology professor at the Department of Behavioral Sciences. My research area is cognitive neuroscience. So the course I'm teaching is also called cognitive neuroscience. And this is the course is Psych 400. And this course only has one prerequisite, which is introductory psychology. And this course also fulfill a psychology major cognition concentration requirement. Now, you may wonder, what is cognitive neuroscience? So I will give you a brief introduction. I know uh, most of us are interested in psychology, you know, how uh, we think, how we feel, you know, the human mind, the behavior, cognition, emotion, etc., etc. But we know psychology is the product of our nervous system. Therefore, to understand better psychology, we also need to understand the biology. So in neurobiology, scientists are working hard uh, trying to understand how the neuron works at the cellular and subcellular level. Now, because psychology and neurobiology focus on different things, different domains, so to facilitate the dialogue between the two big different areas, we actually need some intermediate layers or disciplines to bridge the two big areas. Cognitive neuroscience is one of those uh, disciplines because Cognitive neuroscience directly focus on those higher order cognition, emotions, etc., etc. But instead of focusing on the cellular or subcellular levels, cognitive neuroscience usually focus on the brain region level. Now we want to find out which brain regions they work together and how they work together to support specific cognitive function. Now. There are other disciplines also play an important role bridging the basic biology and psychology. For example, biopsychology, we have physio psychology, we have affective neuroscience, behavioral neuroscience, those different disciplines. These disciplines have something similar, but they also have their own focuses and they may have different preferred paradigms, research methods, or preferred questions. Now, relatively speaking, cognitive neuroscience focuses more on higher level cognition, memory, attention, language, etc., etc. Also, from the methodological perspective, cognitive neuroscience more relies on neuroimaging method. What is neuroimaging? I guess many of you have heard the fMRI, fNIR, those machines can help us to take a picture of the brain so that we can know at a specific moment in the blood oxygen level in different brain regions. That can allow us to see which brain regions are engaged in a specific cognitive processing. We also have other neuroimaging methods like EEG and MEG, which has very good temporal resolution, allows us to see at what time point in millisecond a specific type of processing may occur. I will give you an example how we can use the neural imaging method to study human cognition. This is an fMRI machine. Uh, it can allow us to know the blood oxygen level in different brain regions when the brain is working. So for example, we can give participants a face picture, let them to uh, look at the face picture. This is from one of my previous study. It's a very simple task, but in the brain, many brain regions are engaged by this task. So here I show you the regions that actually get engaged. You see some of the occipital regions because we look at the face picture. And also the region we call the hippocampus memory region also engaged because we need to build the memory for this face. It's very simple, but we use this kind of paradigm. We can study many different things related to faces. For example, you know, we have different type of faces, some are more dominant, some are more attractive, some are more trustworthy. How the brain support the processing of these different faces? And we also know you can make different face expression. Now, how the brain help us to perceive those different type of facial expression? Also think about sometimes we may process unknown faces, sometimes we may process familiar faces. What's the difference? How the brain works differently? Actually, cognitive neuroscientists have done a lot of work on this uh, research topic, and they figure out many brain regions actually play a role in face processing because face is a very important social stimuli. You see these color regions? 
those regions are important for phase processing and probably also important for other things. Another method we use is called EEG, which is electroencephalograph. And we can put electrode on the scalp to measure the brain activity. It has very good temporal resolution. We can know at a specific time point which kind of processing get engaged. Okay, so this is just an example. In this class, first we'll talk about some basic neural anatomy because we need to know the brain parts. Then we'll talk about some neuroimaging method you all can learn. It's very straightforward. Then we'll talk about some cognitive functioning like sensation, attention, memory, emotion, language, etc. For each of the topics, first we'll discuss the phenomena at the psychology level. You know, what is the paradigms we will use to study these phenomena, the topics, and what are the theories, etc., etc. Then we will start to study these topics from the cognitive neuroscience perspective. I will present you a couple of studies to show you how we can study the brain mechanism and what part of the brain may play an important role in supporting those functions. This is an undergraduate level course and you can all learn the material. Now, if you are interested in cognitive neuroscience research, at UM Dearborn, we actually have a cognitive neuroscience lab. We have a very good EEG recording system. You can see we have many sensors. We also have a very good eye tracking system. And we can present participant different stimuli and study their brain activity. You can join my lab as research volunteers, independent study students, honor thesis students, or as graduate students. The benefit of studying cognitive neuroscience this can help you to understand better human mind, human psychology. Also can prepare you for your graduate study if you indeed want to be a cognitive neuroscientist, uh, work in academia. Also, when you study cognitive neuroscience, you will learn a lot of skills in data analysis, programming, or you can directly learn some uh, neuroimaging techniques which can help you to find the industrial job. Finally, if you have any questions related to cognitive neuroscience course or cognitive neuroscience research, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.